Well hello people, so it's Peter here, <laughs> down in the old man shed, <laughs> yes, it's Sunday afternoon, a quarter to three, uh, two weeks to go to get, and it's a nice, very pleasant here in London, 22 degrees, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not brilliantly blue sunny skies, but it's, it's very pleasant out there. Uh, now, I wasn't expecting to make this video after, you know, giving you quite a long one not long ago. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm sorry to have to say that um, I've had a failure of one of the new Locos. Uh, the one being in question is what is the, obviously the Curiscale Class 30, 37. Um, and it is this one. I'll bring it, bring it into, I'll pick it up and show it to you. All right, so she's, that, she's this one. Okay, and what's happened? Um, pretty damn sure it's the motor, a motor failure. All right, because she is running all over the show, jerking, you know, speeding up, slowing down. So I'm not going to send it back to a Curiscale. I know, you know, that's what you all sort of shout. You know, I'll just send it back. I've gone the livery and everything on this one is absolutely perfect. I went to all the trouble of uh, super detailing both ends up and everything, so I've already, you know, done all that, and I know. A Curiscale will probably won't take much notice of that. They'll just replace the loco because I think they're I think they're pretty good. Looking at them in the past, what uh, people's comments are, they're pretty good at that. You know, if, if there's a fault, they will replace it. They will honour their guarantee. But I'm not. I don't want to do that because uh, to my cost in the past, when I've done something like that, both with Hornby and Backman, I've had back very second-hand products. What got sent away was a brand new product admittedly with a problem what I got back was a very second-hand looking product and in some in both cases the product the the problem was still there it wasn't even solved okay so not I haven't got a lot of faith I'm afraid in just sending it back unless they're going to replace it with a brand new mo model uh, who knows so I said to a curious cow after sending video evidence of what was happening with this uh, we know it's not the decoder because I've taken the decoder from here and put it into another loco and that other loco ran fine and then a decoder from a well running loco I put into this and this still ran terribly all right so you know it's not the decoder so all these people start saying oh adjust the black EMF settings and this that and the other start changing so no all right so I've also made a video that you'll see with the help of the DCC concepts concepts alpha meter you will see what it was happening to this yeah because it shows you the current getting used by a loco and it, it just proves without you know with, with, all, with all doubt without doubt um, we're looking at motor I'm gonna so what I'm gonna do I found out how to get the motor out of this and this is why I'm not sending it back to a Curiscale okay and I'm pleased to say it's fairly straightforward it's a bit like the Backman class 66 how you get the motor okay luckily the body getting rid of let alone the removable body top on these which is fantastic getting the actual body off of these is also brilliant all right I mean which I've had to do to get the driver figures in this one anyway because it's fitted with back um, the curious gals little uh, figures in the in there so i did all that so i know to get the body off is straightforward and and anyway i've already had the motor out of this before now when i knew what was wrong so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a video showing you guys <laughs> and i know you shouldn't really have to be doing it yet but i'm going to show you how you do actually get the motor out and then uh, I'm waiting for the replacement motors to come from a Curiscale. I hope they're going to be new and not being used in another model or something. But I will test them before I put them in to the, you know, the loco back again. And I'll also show you how I'm able to test the motor. Okay, So you're going to need um, soldering iron because it is, you know, um, with a quite a nice, you know, finish tip on the end of it, right, you can't have a big chisel thing because you've got to, to get to the motor, we're going to take the PCB build off and then that gives you easy access to the motor. So, um, 
well anyway well that's what I'm going to do guys all right so well, let's get on with it so it's a shame I'm having to make this video but you know you might benefit well hopefully you don't have to because it shouldn't go wrong but if like me you want to do it yourself at least you can see how to get to the motor of the uh, loco if ever you need to okay right let's do that okay body shell removal so leaving the roof in place I don't need that you've got your four clips yeah to either side so let's see if I can do this. I put this using the fingernails. I don't even bother now to, uh, to to use the plastic pieces. So let's see if I can get my fingernails in there. Pull the body apart. That's already come up from that end. All right. So there's the clips. It's either side. Okay. Let's put the body somewhere safe. We don't need that anymore. You can see I had put the figures in, that's why it's so easy just to put the figures in once you've got the body off. But what we've got to do guys, we've got to get the PCB, bead, PCB board off. Okay, um, and before anything else I'm going to get the, uh, the, oh God, the decoder off as well. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So normally... I like teasing it off with a cocktail stick because I know I'm not doing anything metallic then. Hopefully she's not be doing anything wrong. Just keep easing it up either side very gently. And I don't know if you people realise that these decoders are put um, upside down. But there you are. So that's a decoder. So decoder goes somewhere safe. There we are. Um, Everything I'm pleased to say, other than the um, the pickups from the from the bogies, everything is on these plugs. But the pickup from the bogies are soldered on at each corner. All right. So from that side of the bogey, from this side of the bogey, it comes up and is soldered there. From this side of the bogey, the wire obviously comes up from its pickups and is soldered to that point there, that point there. The motor. Is also soldered to the PCB board. All right. So what I'm going to do now, um, all the wires, when you, when you put this back, all the wires will have to be off. You know, on the inside of the chassis. Right. You don't want it to because the PCB board is the same thickness as the chassis, so you don't want anything sticking out. So where I've got, there's a little groove there in the PCB board. There, and you see that's where the motor wires are coming out from underneath and coming up into the uh, onto the onto the PCB board anyway I'll show you all that so let's have a look and see so uh, well nice pair of tweezers uh, I'm going to start first of all take off the tape it's used before I might use might use something else next time so I'm going to get these off there we are comes off nice and easy off nice and easy yeah so that one can go back there and what I'll do excuse me I just got to reach across hold on sorry about that I wanted to reach across to my Tamiya tape so what I will do just so those wires are, don't get in the way they're out the way there now take them over there uh, there's one still to come over this side so let's turn this round same again, there's a bit of black tape hold, holding in place. A bit of Tamiya tape, bring that back, keep that well out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of what I want to do next. Just just tape it out of the way, so no problem. Now while I'm here, might as well do this one. So just tease it off. Tease it off. Tease it off. This one's got a bit more tape on the, on the back here, keeping everything down. I'll reuse this tape, so I'll just take it off carefully. And then the same again, this little pile, without pulling on them anymore, I will just hold back in place with a bit of Tamiya tape again, just to get them out of the way. 
nice that they're plug-ins so I won't do anything else other than just have it taped out of the way because I want them back virtually where they come out from which as you can see is right alongside the board turn it around again last bit of tape needed I think yeah Take them over the top, and that's it. So there. Now this one is the speaker, I believe. So let's get that up. Yeah, that's the speaker. To get the speaker out, they're clipped in place with these. So you just get get hold of the edge of the plastic, and you know, give it a little squeeze in. And there we are. Same on that side, it's virtually coming out that side, so let's do it on that side. There we are, turn it around, just same again, there we are. That's that one, and that's that one, you can see it fell out. The speaker, because of the plug, yeah, can be removed now, so that's that. So let's do that. Lovely clean PCB board, there we are. Held in place with four screws, one, two, three, four on the edges there, don't undo that screw there, here coming up, that's the, this is the motor wire, okay solder to there, solder to there, okay so that's why we need the soldering gun, alright so I'm gonna get my soldering iron out, it's that one and as you see it's got a nice fine tip, so quickly undo one, And the wire comes up from underneath there, undo the other one, and the wire comes up from underneath there. Okay. These are the wires coming up from the pickups. Come on, that's one. Turn it around because uh, I can do it that way. Trying to get hold of the wire before I unsolder it. She's there, see there's only a little bit of wire. There we are. Gives me something to get hold of now as I give it an unsolder. That's that one. And then because I'm left-handed or right-handed guys, I'm just gonna undo I can't work like this in front of in, with the camera, so I'm just gonna stop the camera and undo these two. Right, okay, we're back guys. Uh, right, I'm now going to unscrew four screws. Da, 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 da. They're very small. Come on. Put them in there. Last one. Da, da, da. So turn it around, hopefully keep it in camera. Yeah. And you can see I've got the wire off there. And the wire's off here. See see this little black wire here? This is the uh That, that little wire there that comes up from the uh, from the bogey. All right. Last four screws. One. Last one's there. There you go. Now the big reveal. And there we are. There's your stay alive underneath. There's a small sugar scoop a cube a speaker. But there we are. So there's the PCB board and there's the motor. 
very, very thin drive shafts. I have to say, they're very thin. But now, guys, you can't get to the bogey towers. Don't need to, all right? You've got another four screws now to undo the clamps that hold the motor in place. So we, do you want me to do that? I'll do that then. I'll carry on. They're the same size screws as what I've just taken out. Oh, sorry, not the camera. Let's get you back. <laughs> all done. All right, not edited in. It's all done. You know, you're seeing what I'm doing. And uh, when I come to put it back, guys, I, I won't do it on camera because I want to make a, you know, I need to sort of uh, see what I'm doing without having a camera in the way, if you don't mind. Same size screws, so they can all go in together. They'll all be the same. Oh, there's the clamp that's come out with that one. You see, there's the clamp. The clamps are exactly the same on both sides as well. There's no, there's nothing different about them. It's got that little shape to go over the motor. Put that in there. Yeah, there we are. And that one's got left with the two nuts inside. Okay, so there's the shape. Both are identical. Right. Two thin nose pair of tweezers. Get it in there, one pair on one drive shaft, you know, on the thing. Lift up if you can, he says, without it slipping. He hopes too much. Come on, what am I doing? Lift it up together. Like that, the drive shafts just fall out. There we are, there's the drive shafts left in place. That's it guys, that's the offending motor that's giving me trouble. It's the usual way of uh, fixing, oh, I don't know what that is there. Anyway, I'll leave that there, I'm not going to do anything with it. Yeah, seems fine, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to test this motor as it is, without it being in the loco. And we're going to see on the alpha meter if this gives me funny readings or not because now there's no, there's no drive chain to worry about. Okay, so that's how you get the motor out. Right, you may not believe this guys, but this is my homemade tester. What it is, is the PCB board from a Class 66 Backman. Uh, soldered to it are the motor wires, and I've got the motor attached by crocodile clips to to the wires and the other side is obviously going with crocodile clips that I will put onto the track to get the power and because that's a sound chip so this is not the same chip this happens to be for a class 68 believe it or not but it's an ESU lock sound chip 21 pin and I've even soldered the uh, a speaker to it so that I can find out if it's got sound and because it is a class 66 it actually has lights fitted which I just tidied up all the wires and just put on the back so when I test this out I can even have I can check the lights I can check the sound and if it's got a motor attached you know check the motor all right so let's see this in operation then <laughs> okay so I know it's a bit of Heath Robinson but the PCB board is now picking up via the crocodile clips uh, power from the track and because I'm getting the power from the track that would mean that the DCC Concepts alpha meter will come into play so I'm going to bring the uh, oh well, let's just show you the fact if I press uh, zero on the board you see we have lights on this circuit board so you can check the the lights and everything see directional travel sound yes so as I said this is a class 68 chip in there Absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just use it as my testing chip. Turn the lights off. But there we are. I suppose. See, it's all working. Turn the turn that off now. So this is all wired up. Obviously, I can hold it. There's no danger in holding it. But now I'm going to put uh, the 15. You know, because you'll see on the oncoming film the problem where I was running 15. So I'm going to move the camera. Hold on. So here we are back how we were which on uh, this is showing you just like it is on the other films 
with nothing going through on the track, it's only it's 0.3, yeah. I'm now going to put a value, and you'll see this motor spin now, a value of the 15 speed steps that was before. There we are. But now, of course, she's not in the loco now, so she's got no, uh, nothing uh, interfering with the motor itself. And we'll see where, oh, but there we are. It's jumping up 40. I can tell you that holding it, 50, 56, I can tell you that by holding it, it's vibrating a lot. I don't know if it's out of balance or what. But there we are. So we're now, oh, few, yes, well, there we are, C60. All right, guys, so it's not the back EMF because this motor's under no strain whatsoever. It is what it is. And yet, look at that, it's going up to the 60. This is, you know, and as, as I hold the motor, it would start getting hot. And then, of course, if it's drawing too much power, because there is a problem, it will end up blowing your chip. This is what you've got to be careful of. This is why this alpha meter is brilliant. Oh, crikey, all over the show there. And I felt that on the motor. It did all manner of things in my fing through my fingers. I felt uh, it shuddering. All right, so there we are, people. And what I'll do is I'll put, just like this, I will just attach a normal motor that I know is running well, and we'll see what the amps are being used on that. But here we are. So now it's back down to the 40s again. It should be in the 37s, to be honest, or, you know, low 40s. Now, here we go again. See, it's going all over the show. And now if I was to touch maybe the motor to put a bit of... I'm just literally touching it. So maybe that's where the back EMF would come into it. No. All right, so as I say, this is why I'm convinced it's the motor. Oh my God, look at that, it's up in, whoa, you see that? One amp there. So I'm gonna stop it at that, guys, because I'm not sure. I'm gonna just take the power off. That's it. Still, you know, yeah, it stopped dead. Didn't even spin. And there we are, back onto the normal thing. Okay, this is a motor that I know is good. It's uh, it's for either a Backman 37 or the 66. It's what I've used in the past. And now I'm gonna put 15 through this one and you'll see the weights, you'll see it revolving and you might even hear it buzzing. So I'm gonna put the same power through 15. We'll see what the amps do. Right, we're up to 15, so you can see we're spinning. In the 32s, low 30s at the moment. It's getting faster and faster. She's not up to the 15 speed step yet. There we are. That's it. A little bit of a different result. And I can tell you that um, it's not making any, you know, hardly any uh, vibration through my finger and thumb. That's how I know it's going to be a good motor. All right, so what's wrong with the other ones? Why do they behave like that? I have no idea. Well, there we are. This one I know is good. So I'll turn that off. And that's it, I've proved my point. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at the uh, DCC Concepts Alpha Meter. There's uh, about 15 locos on the track. There's, uh, there's lights on the buffered lights that take power from the, uh, from the track. So all in all, with nothing absolutely happening, apart from one loco has got its lights on, that's what the uh, just here is what the track is using at the moment 0 0.29, 0 0.3 of an amp okay now keep an eye I'm going to show you the, the, the loco that's given me trouble which is uh, 37 uh, 606 is it yeah 606 in direct rail services and I'm going to run it at a speed step of 15 up on the controller 
I'm not going to have anything on it other than just running the motor. No lights, no sound or anything like that. So here, let me just raise you up. There's the loco in question. She's on a rolling road, so I can just, you know, literally have it running there. And so there's no stress on it whatsoever going around corners or anything like that. She's literally on the rolling road. And we're going to see what happens with the amps feeding to the motor. So going to dial in 15 now. Uh, let's bring that down there and I'm putting in 15. That's it. So I'll actually set on 15. There goes the amps. 37, that's acceptable. That's the same as what my other ones are. Even the 40 is acceptable. But, oh, 59. 60. And you can hear the, the loco, can't you? Stuttering. 59 again. Shouldn't be up in the 50s anyway. 70 there. 60. And as you can see, it's all over the show. Back down to 40. And she sounds like she's running okay-ish. Oh, but now spiking back to 56. And so there we are, guys. That's, you know, it shouldn't be like this. Uh, into the 60s there again. And you can hear the un rough running of the loco on its rolling roads, can't you? So if you were to see that going around the track, it would be stuttering like crazy. Oh, back up into the 70s there. All right, it's not supposed to do that. So this is why I sent, I uh, you know, emailed a Curascal and said, send me the motor. I took the chip out of this loco, put it into another loco. It was fine. Um, put a, a good chip from another loco into this one, and it, the stuttering still it remains with the loco. It's not the chip. I'm pretty damn sure it's the motor. I've had this before in now a Hornby, in Backman, in Helgen. Every you know, every talk, type of uh, model manufacturer that I've got at one point in the five years I've been DCCing, um, I've had to replace a motor. Backman's on the class 66, is then a 37, a Helgen 33, and uh, a Hornby class 60, or and, uh, and a class 67. Okay, oh, 75, see, so while I'm talking to you, it's going all over the show, isn't it? So I'm going to stop it, and you'll see what it goes back down to. And it should go down to the 30 odd. There we go. Now, whilst looking... Right, so we're back to uh, everything is stationary again. So what I'm going to do now, guys, as a comparison with uh, the Acura Scale 37 that I think has got a, a dodgy motor in, I'm going to make a film of some other uh, locos, different manufacturers, all right? So the first one I'm going to do is... Uh, what's, what we got? Well, so, right, we've got a Hatton's Class 66 in the DB Schenker livery, OK? So I'm going to send that around the track just as it you know just the, just the motor running no lights no sound and then we'll have a look and see what the, the uh, what amps she's pulling I'm gonna give it a value uh, I normally give these the Hattons like going around uh, a value of 10 so I'm gonna set her off and we're gonna go back to the meter guys all right because this is not videos about the train looking at trains going around this is seeing what happens to the uh, the meter what power these trains are drawing so there we are so we're, this one's up in the 40s so let's go going around at quite a nice speed and it seems to be the usual thing you know the, the usual fluctuation of a, of a few few points there's nothing sort of spiking, what I call spiking, you know, like very, very vast ranges in the uh, in the meter. That's that's all within the 40 range. And I go back up, and you'll see her running sweetly. 
no problems with it. This is a Hatton 66, so it's quite a heavy loco. But running fine. All in the 40s, nice and, nice and steady, no spiking going on whatsoever. When I say steady, within the 40 range. As you can see, there's a the point of an amp keeps going up and down, whatever, by points of amps. But And that's at uh, speed step, I said 10. No, actually, it's 11. That's all right, though. Right, we're now going to go on to um, other makes of uh, locos, all right, because I'm doing a comparison between the manufacturers, all right? So there we go. So I'll just shut this down and you'll see that it all goes back to about the 30, 31 when there's nothing running. So on, on the layout, uh, I think I said it's 15 locos, including the... Uh, the Curascale loco that's wrong, you know, because I mean, it's no, you know, it's, it's sitting on a, it's powered up as such, but she's not running, so therefore, um, doesn't give any uh, readings on the meter. But that's what I wanted to do, just to show you that. Okay, guys, right. What we got now is a Hornby Class 60. All right, just put in a wake, just to give another manufacturer. And let's see what uh, she's pulling. Quite high speed steps because uh, the TTS decoder that's in there. Oh, there we go with the parakeets. You know, it needs needs quite high to get it going quite well. But nevertheless, that's what she's doing. So just under the 40, this one. So in the high 30s, this one seems to be a very constant. And she touched 40, so there you go. So that seems to be about, you know, thank you parakeets, that seems to be the mark with these locos. So we've now had a Hatton 66. We've got the Hornby Class 60, so it's not a small model. And that's obviously fitted with the TTS. So just no lights, no sound, nothing like that, just running around so we can see what the average uh, figure is on here, see what it is. All right, so these are the amps down there. So that's what the power source is. Nice, good 17 volts. And it's less, you know, it's coming up, it's less than half an amp power usage with one loco going around with 15 other locos or 14 other locos sitting on the, on the loop. Okay. Okay, so next one on the list is the uh, Acuriscal 37608 Andromeda. All right, so hopefully <laughs> this should show that she's working normally. Just to put an Acuriscale loco on there to compare it to what's happened with the first one. So let's have a look at the alpha meter. So obviously nothing yet. I'm going to put this one up to a setting of uh, 14 or 15. 15, I think, isn't it? Yeah, so she's going up to 15. That was when uh, the other one was spiking all over the show, the first one, all right, the one that we got issues with. So we'll see what this one does. You can hear in the background she's running. So we're up in the 40s, 30s, high 30s, into the 40s. Little spikes here and there, you know, sort of of a couple point twos and things. 41, 42 now, but going back into what the high 30s again, or maybe stay, yeah, there we are. So it seems to be a range of about four or five points. The loco looks fine. I'm looking at the loco, it's not doing anything, even though the uh, the little meter there is fluctuating a bit. I mean, this could be dirt on the track you know I mean what what causes it to do this instead of it always being constant is obviously you know the current going through the armature of the um, of the motor it's picking it up it could be the carbon brushes on the motor that might be what's wrong with the other motor in the first place something's wrong with the armature and that commutator whatever you call it 
but there we are see so Andromeda's behaving itself I'll just raise the camera back again so you'll see when it comes back into view it actually is running well and there we are so we've done a comparison of uh, different makes of locos to see what the uh, how the thing spikes there we are going around good as gold okay okay so to finish off the test we now will have a Backman locomotive going around in this case the 37 and um, so that means that we've tried we've seen what the Hornby class 60 does we've seen what a Hatton 66 does we've seen what a Curascale 37 does now let's see what a Backman does okay so I'm going to give this something in the region of 14 or 15 speed steps again off she goes lovely loco this is not the new version of the Backman this is not the retooled Backman and now let's see what she's pulling and interestingly although she's behaving herself it's one of the highest ones of the lot so she's up in the 40s she runs well it's sound, it's fitted with a Lego Biffo uh, sound chip in there, so it'll, apart from the Hornby, that, which is obviously a TTS decoder, everything else is ESU lock sound stuff. But there we are guys, there's all these different locos, they all pull, you know, their different uh, amps. But the the thing is, what I try to point out, and what you you know, what you saw on the Acura scale one that's gone wrong, they, they do not spike. They they go up and down by you know, 0.4 or something like that of an amp. They've got a sort of range that they go up and down in, but they don't peak. They don't spike. See, they're quite constant. And then it goes down, and then it might go up, and that's you know dirty track, something going on with the, the mechanism in the loco, but not really going too badly. And and uh, I'll take you back up, and the loco itself is going around as good as gold. All right, interesting. Okay. Well, right, guys. So here I am back again. So I'll guess I'll cobble all the clips together to make the one film and we'll say this is part one, all right? Because I haven't got the new motors or motor from Mercura scale yet, uh, which I want to test out and everything before putting everything back together again. So obviously when, when I do, I'll, I'll do that. And then that'll be the part two, hopefully seeing the loco, you know, everything running and looking at the meter and uh, seeing that uh, everything should be you know good giving good results if the new motor that comes from Mercura scale still does the same then yeah I'll be back on the phone and saying oi you know this is no good so you know but by 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 me using my little Heath Robinson device <laughs> oh dear but it works you saw it working it better get you know because I can plug it to the track I can use the alpha meter so it's great you know but uh, because of that I'll be able to check the new motor when it comes and uh, hopefully get a good result. But uh, for now, this is quite a long video, so I'll call it a day. You've seen me taking the body off. I don't. I want to put the body back. You know, it's just reverse. You just got to be careful how you put the motor in. You know, you put the drive shaft in one side, get the motor down. You find you can put the mo the drive shaft in the other side and move the motor across centrally, and then it will drop down. Okay, it's not it's not hard just have to make sure the drive shafts go into their slots so I may or may not film that okay because it's, it's just so fiddly to try and do with a camera in front of your eyes you know all right so yeah so this we'll call this one part one I'll cobble it all together and I'll upload it so you can see it and you may be shocked you know may or may not be shocked by what I've got to do or the fact that you got to do it it's just it is a shame but 
you know, these motors are made in their hundreds of thousands. I don't blame a Curacao, not you know, because they don't make the motor. They get, you know, they buy the motor in from a reputable manufacturer. And uh, I've had motors go wrong in Backman's. I've had motors go wrong in uh, a Helgen, and I've had motors go wrong in a Hornby. You know, over the five years that I've had the model, you know. So there we are, all different. And I might do on the other video. I might do. See, I've got a little box here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, this. these are the motors that went wrong. Now I suppose I could do another little video where I, why, you know, plug these onto that monitor. Well, in actual fact, one of them I daren't because that one there, I plugged onto, it says, is it do not use, I've written on the side of it. I don't know why I've kept them because, I don't know why, I, I, I tried getting off the, uh, the balance weights once. It's, these, because these are used in the Backman, these do have replaceable um, carbon brushes, brushes, you know, uh, little carbon brushes. You know, you can get you can get the brushes out on these. The other other motors you can't. But when I put this on a DC, I've got my little fateful clipper DC controller, so I'm not using my little Heath Robinson device. This thing went up in smoke as soon as it had power go to it. Whoa! So God knows what that would have done to a chip. All right, and that's that's not even been used. It's, it's still got its um, suppressors and everything soldered onto it. This is what I think Backman sent me as supposedly a new motor, and I reckon it got taken out of something that got returned. And this is why I say to you, I'm not really happy about returning stuff because this was supposed to be a brand new motor. It wasn't in a packet. It's sent like this. It's got the wires attached. But when I attack, you know, when I went to sort it all out, well. It went crazy. It was worse than what was, the, you know, the one I was replacing it with. Uh, and then I got this one out the other day, and just to remind myself, I thought, "Oh, what's up with this one?" I put it on DC, and it went up in smoke. <sighs> so there you are. There's a sort of like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a, that's over five years worth of sort of problems, and they're they're mostly for the Backmans because the Backman 66 and the Backman's 37s has had new engines. And then in another box absolutely crammed with motors not because now these I've got as a job lot all right there's this company that they're different motors again well they're the same sort of motors again but they've got different shouting anyway but um yeah this this was a oh that's that's from the uh six car 67 that motor blew up my chip my TTS decoder where this motor was giving trouble so much voltage was getting drawn through it that it actually the TTS decoder got too hot and it blew up so it was a new engine needed all right so it's not just um, it's not just a Curacao or Backman this was the Honda worked perfectly for years and then all of a sudden had I paid attention to the alpha meter I would have seen that this was giving trouble and I would have stopped it and saved myself a TTS decoder there you go right that's it so Hopefully, well, I don't know if it's going to be, I might be at Getz next, okay? <laughs> it's only two weeks away, or the motors might come next week and I can try them out and uh, put up a video, hopefully showing the 37 running around. All right, guys, so, yeah. Uh, Hey-ho, yeah, the joys of modelling, innit, you know? But um, at least, hopefully, I've got the knowledge, I hope, of getting myself out of trouble. All right, but till then, guys, all the best. See you when I see you again. All right, bye for now. Bye-bye.